Hi, welcome back. It's been two weeks since I last checked in with you. Things are going really great. Um, school is just about in session. Um, it is August, so it'll be September before you know it, and we'll be headed back to school. I have been very busy getting ready for the school year, but I've also been busy in my Teachers Pay Teachers store working on some new products. And in particular, one of the things that I posted was a brand new product line called Phenomenaling. So if you've been following me, you probably saw that this product line was posted. I have about five products up right now with Phenomenaling. Um, and I thought that one of the, I guess, good things about this product line is it really inspires teachers to incorporate a little bit more modeling into their classroom. So naturally, I thought one of the best things I could do was talk a little bit about some strategies for modeling in your classroom. This is especially helpful for really anybody who's looking to provide some scaffolding for your students, um, especially when it comes to drawing models. Models are great for a lot of reasons, but in particular, it really helps to hit the three-dimensional learning of the next generation science standards because it enables your students to, again, act like scientists by learning the science. And then the cool part is it really helps your students to understand the scientific process because right as we learn more in science, we are going to continue to revise um, a lot of our models. So with that said, my very first tip, and there are five tips, but my very first tip for you, when if you're thinking about um, doing some modeling with your students is first you have to talk to your students about what a model is, but don't just call it any old model. Really what I call it with my students is an explanatory model. And the reason why I add that word explanatory is because a model seeks to explain something. So I find by just adding that word explanatory, that allows the students to understand that really the goal of any model is to explain. And obviously in our classrooms, especially if you're doing the next generation science standards, your goal is going to be to explain a phenomenon using the science that you know you learn over the course of a unit. So that is my first tip. My second tip for both you and your students so that you can again help them um, construct explanations for phenomena using models is make sure that you tell your students that the criteria for any model is that they have to include both the observable and the unobservable. So if they don't have that, most likely it's not going to be an explanatory model. So now we're gonna take tip number two and kind of dissect it into two more tips. So tip number three, a lot of students often get hung up on where to start. So tip number three is to have your students relate what they know. So they've seen so many things in the world around them outside of their classroom experiences. They all come into your classroom with so many different experiences. And so I think it's really important that using that phenomena, the students can document what they know. And so one place to start is to use those five senses to allow your students to document what they know. So if it's some, something simple like, um, you know, a balloon sticking to a wall as a result of static electricity, for example, you know, your students should literally start by drawing a balloon attached to the wall, right? Start with what you know, what you see, what you're, you observe, and that'll ultimately help them lead into the next phase. So tip number four is about don't underestimate the power of the zoom in bubble. So we talked about the observable in the last tip, but in tip number four, we need to talk about the unobservable. So with the unobservable, I find that students are going to be better prepared to depict what's going on in the unobservable if you draw some sort of zoom in bubble. Some journal articles that I've read have kind of referred the, to this as um, like if you had a really high powered microscope and you were to zoom in and take a look at a picture of what was going on on the particulate level, you know, what would this look like? Or there was one article that I read that talked about microscope eyes. You know, if you were to look at this, what would be going on? So having your students draw a zoom in bubble of some kind would make things really easy for them to, again, depict what's going on on the particulate level. And then my fifth and final tip to help your students, some, again, for some strategies for incorporating modeling in your classroom, is allow your students to kind of show some sort of sequence of events. So if we go back to the static electricity example, if your students um, have a balloon that they blow up, 
obviously it doesn't stick to the to the wall immediately. What, what do they have to do? Well, they have to rub it on their shirt, they have to rub it on their head, and then it'll stick to the wall. So again, having your students include some sort of sequence of events can also be very helpful because that not only allows them to, again, depict what they know and it gives them a starting point, but it's kind of nice because they can use those observations or that evidence to kind of talk a little bit about what they think is going on. So obviously, for example, we know that the balloon doesn't stick before you rub it. What must the rubbing do? So this allows the teacher to interact with the students more because they learn by doing. And so I found that also including that sequence of events inside a model, an explanatory model, makes things easier for the students as well. So that is five strategies for you to use as you incorporate some modeling into your classes. Another recommendation would be just start small. You know, start with a really easy phenomena for the students to kind of think about. And, you know, the other thing is try not to get so hung up on the models being completely accurate. Obviously, our students are just starting out. We have plenty of years of scientific knowledge under our belts, but our students, they really don't. And so um, I think it's really important that you not only help the students to construct models, but the accuracy will start to improve as you kind of question the students. And so try not to get too hung up on that. And then also as the students communicate with each other, more likely the accuracy will improve as well. So I hope you are having a great summer. Thank you so much for watching and um, I will talk to you in a couple more weeks. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope you found the information helpful as you teach science to your students. I really don't want to lose touch, so please make sure that you hit both like and subscribe so you get notifications every time I post a new video, and I'll catch you later.